Welcome to Riley on Film. I'm your host, Damian Riley. You can find out more and subscribe for free always at RileyOnFilm.com. Now, on with the show. Hello out there. Thank you for tuning in today. In this episode, I'm going to be covering uh, Lose, the film Lose. Uh, and the film House on Haunted Hill, the old black and white one. But I'm I'm so lucky today because I have a guest. <laughs> uh, Hermione <laughs> Flavia is here with me, and I'm really excited to have her. And I'm just going to invite her to just say a few words about who she is. Uh, hi, <laughs> I'm so excited to be here. Um, who am I? That's a question. <laughs> um, <laughs> or what you do? A, or <laughs> I'm a, a screenwriter and writer, yes. so yeah. that's that's basically what I do. Um, and yeah, you can find me on Instagram at Hermione Flavia, and then you can go from there. I review books, uh, I talk about movies. I think basically I just love a good story, so I love writing, mm-hmm. I love watching movies. Yeah, that's, that's, that's kind of me. That's amazing. All right, well, hey, I'm going to jump into Lou's here. Uh, this film, <laughs> I don't want you know, to be annoying about it or anything like that, but uh, it's different. It's a very different film. Yeah. And let me just tell you a little bit about it before I, I give you my two cents on it. It's called <laughs> Loose. It's spelled L-U-Z. And it is streaming on one service that I found, a free service actually called, I believe it was Crackle. Yeah, I think it was on Crackle. That's where I saw it. And you have to put up with all the uh, advertisements, which is not fun. Um, but yeah, they're charging you on Prime Video. Looks like two ninety nine. But you can get it on Crackle for free, and, and I, I, you know, it's it's worth watching definitely. Um, mm-hmm. It's an hour and ten minutes. It's a horror mystery thriller. It came out July nineteenth, two thousand nineteen, and it's uh, about Luce, a young cab driver. One night, she drags herself into the brightly lit entrance of a rundown police station. And a demonic entity follows her, determined to finally be close to the woman it loves. Whoa. That's just Internet Movie Database. Usually they're pretty vanilla. They don't tell you much, but my goodness. Just sounds quite insane. Just explain the film to me. <laughs> See, you should have gone to Internet Movie Database. I get it now. I get it now. You should have gone to Internet Movie Database. Uh, okay, well... um. Let me, let me just say a few words about it. I'm tempted to have you talk about it because you just said that. But no, I'm going to talk about it and then you can jump in after yeah. that. Okay, so this film for me really won points because of what I was talking about earlier, the atmosphere. It was very atmospheric. Uh, and there were like the first, I want to say 12 minutes. I didn't time it, but I think it's 12 to 15 minutes are absolutely amazing. They are so creepy and so weird and there's like a guy behind a desk and there's just this i guess you can't even tell if it's a woman at first just this kind of disheveled person in rolled up jeans walking you know in this looks like a waiting room kind of or a medical office of some sort and this guy's just stamping things like he's a security guy or something like that and then finally after all this creepy time of zooming in on her she just turns to him and she says something like uh are you happy with your life? So it sort of made me think that maybe it was a mental hospital. I wasn't quite sure. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I don't I don't know. I didn't know at first what it was, but I can kind of... I've sort of put the film together in my mind. But it's one of those films that you have to do that. You have to sort of... Spares you a lot of grief. And I thought that that was such mm-hmm. a great thing. Now... I'm a college teacher. I, I, I change jobs uh, in the times that I, I now teach college English, and I oh. do tutoring. I do online tutoring. So um, I'm always evaluating. It's like that's my job. Sure. You know, I'm doing grades. And, and then, of course, when I'm not doing that, I'm watching movies, and I'm evaluating the movies. So mm-hmm. I'm a major evaluator, you know. So I'm trying to get back to more just, okay, let's look at what the movie is. And then we'll have a tiny part where I evaluate it, but mostly I just want to talk about what's there. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I do. Yeah, and okay. I think that's. Please listen carefully. I Go think ahead. sometimes it's uh, the other thing is that when you stop and pause like that, 
Like, say say the wife walks in and yeah. she says, go to hell. Uh -huh. You can observe your own reaction as well, right? Yeah. And kind of evaluate that. So it's got, like, layers. You don't have to... Um, yeah. Yeah, it gives you, like, a, a new lens. Yeah, and, and, like, in the U.S., I don't know if you've been following our election, but, you know, what if people on both sides, or all three sides, or all thousand sides, whatever sides there are, what if they sure. all just, just, just observed, you know? Yeah, without... Um, no I mean, evaluation, no evaluation, no judgment. It's yeah. another word for judging, you know. Yeah, but, yeah. But yeah, I just think that's powerful. And so when we look at lose, <laughs> we're going to try and just look at what's here. Now, the one thing that I want to say about it, I think I've pretty much described the plot just by reading yeah. that. Um, you yeah. know, I'd love to sit with the director and just go, give it to me in like five-year-old terms. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's hard sometimes when you're reading subtitles as well. It's easy oh, yeah. to sort of, like, not to miss things exactly, but it's like, it's a yep. translation. So if something's not an exact translation, you kind of get a softer meaning. Like, yeah. it could be more if you speak German or Spanish. I don't know, like, maybe it's a little more concrete. Yeah. I don't know. I totally but, agree. I totally agree. Yeah. And then you also have to take into consideration, like I said earlier, people probably haven't heard of this film. Well, it's... They may have seen it flash by, but mm -hmm. I don't think a lot of people have seen it. There's only a thousand reviews, and it came out two years ago. There's yeah. only a thousand reviews on Internet Movie Database. So, you know, it, it, it's probably getting a, an apprehension of the Spanish culture and history, too. I mean, yeah. it, it's not just the language. Sometimes it goes, I really liked what you said about the language. That is so true. Yeah. Stuff gets lost in translation. But even beyond that, like, what was this guy's childhood like? <laughs> Say wherever he grew up. I don't know. I should check. I should know. But oh, uh, she's from Chile, so like, oh, is Chile, he Chilean yeah. or is he Spanish? Like, I don't know. The language is Spanish. Yeah, I don't. It probably yeah. says it right up here. Let me see. Maybe. Oh, he was born in Germany. That's interesting. Oh, okay. That's. So maybe he he was like you. He traveled around and lived different places. <laughs> that would explain it. <laughs> Uh, okay. Well, listen, uh, I, so I give it a 6 out of 10. How would you feel about this film? So, um, <clears throat> I feel like it borrowed a little bit from Italian giallo horror, mm -hmm. like Suspiria and things like that. I kind of felt like that influence was there with the... Um, the yeah. takes were slightly static, especially like the opening one that you mentioned where yeah. you know this person walks in and I was like, is that a teenage boy or is that a woman or like what what am I watching, you know? Yeah. And I was like, it's a lobby, like it's the most generic lobby. And then I kind of started to get it where I was like, oh, OK, like lots of static shots and like um, sometimes the use of color is a little bit like the giallo horrors. Yeah. So I was like, OK, maybe it's a little homage to sort of, you know, the... Yeah, um, those kinds of films. I don't know. That's kind of where what influence I felt. But um, I thought the performance of Luz herself, if that's how you pronounce her name, was yeah. so good because yeah, it there's was. about four locations, and they, I feel like the hallways they might be shooting at night, like in their dad's office or something. Like it doesn't look mm -hmm. like that. It's really well shot. But I was kind of thinking, like, that would be such a cheap location. Like, you wouldn't have massive location fees for these places. Right. And then the, a large portion of the film takes place in, um, like, a conference room in the police station. Yeah. And I thought that was so effective. Like, because Liz is under hypnosis to sort of remember something that happened in her cab earlier that evening and they're trying to get information so she's under hypnosis so she's kind of just being like the camera is filming her driving a car but she's sitting in a chair in a conference room and then so some elements are brought in that are in her imagination but it's still being shot in the conference room and so her performance there of like being very natural and um like, the acting is just really good in that moment, I think. Yeah. Because she's really, like, she doesn't look like she's in a high school production and they couldn't afford, like, to make a set that was a car. Like, it doesn't feel that way. It feels like, oh, okay, like, she's sort of getting more into the hypnosis and what's going to happen. And um, so I thought that was kind of, I don't know, like, a real credit to that actress, the way she kind of... Um, I agree. ...inhabited that role so well. And I loved the kind of backdrop of like, oh, you know, we met at a 
Catholic high school in Chile and I was like uh huh <laughs> and then it's like one time Louis convinced everybody that they'd been poisoned <laughs> like, jeez okay and then they're like and then we went down to the basement and I was like I love this I love these like kind of you know witchcrafty kind of elements oh, in movies yeah. really fun and so the Catholic school, school to me sort of reminds me of like the craft or like you know those kinds of stories Mm -hmm. um, so I was like, okay, I like this, but it was, I didn't love the film. I think it was yeah. such a great budget film. Like the cinematography is good and the sound design is really interesting as well. Did you notice yeah. like the music was so kind of like, I think that's a, reminded me a little bit of Giallo again, but it was sort of like, there would be like drums or something where like you yeah. would expect a different kind of music than what yes. they used. And yet it totally worked and created this kind of um, atonality almost that just kind of gelled in this weird way. I might not be explaining that very well. The you music are, you is, are. But it's like the, it would be like drumming and I'd be like, why would that, why would you pick drumming for this moment? And then I'm like, because it feels off and everything is off. She's like a cab driver. And then even like the other characters are like, aren't you worried about being like a cab driver like isn't that yeah. dangerous she's like sometimes it's dangerous you know like it's kind of and everyone's got a slight flatness to them like i i, I remember sit, her, seeing her sitting there saying that and yeah. and i was just thinking to myself what a really shitty job especially for right? a small I and mean, this is not because right. i mean if somebody decides they want to take your cash or something and you're yeah. that small i mean unless you have a gun or something unless you have a demon and <laughs> like your witchcraft skills and i think that's kind of the thing is she's like yeah sometimes it's dangerous it's but i remember thing. looking at her too and i said i thought to myself she looks terrible she looks very tomboy a uh, very butch you know but i thought yeah. you know what i have a what should you say doesn't she have a beautiful face? Like oh, that's what I was going to say. I have a hunch that, yeah. you know, she's going to dress herself up or something's going to happen and we're going to see, you know, that she's really a pretty actress. Now, I looked here. Lucy's... And we could talk about how hot the guys were. That's right. Like, that's right. They that's were. Right. So yeah. <laughs> that's I, why we're not mentioning them. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll, uh, I'll work out more and then we'll talk. <laughs> but, no, yeah, we don't want to see my bony arms on the cover of my podcast. No, just kidding. Anyway, no, but she, she is a very beautiful actress. When they finally reveal her you know and show her she's very pretty and so is her i mean her girlfriend i think it was she's very attractive as well and it's just neat how they play back and forth I, starting out being a lesbian couple i i, I don't didn't i, I was they? like you i didn't get yeah because she said at the beginning she's my wife remember yeah but she was infested by the demon at that time oh i see he moved so, like, around he moved yeah, around he okay. moves from body to body to get closer to her I guess so like you, it was so complicated. Work, I said, right? I'm just going to look at the neon lights. I'm just going to, there's neon <laughs> lights. That's cool. They look 70s style. That's cool. You know. Yeah, it did look 70s, right? It did. A lot of I it. The file cabinets. Yeah, it did look um, 70s. But what I wanted to crazy. say is kind of a silly thing. She kind of looks like, and you might be able to remember her name. I'm I, I'm embarrassed. I can't remember. The, the woman in the Matrix. Uh, remember her name? From the Matrix. I know the character is Trinity. Yeah, but I'm trying to think of her, exactly. the actress's she name. Anyway. Me slightly you and I are terrible with names. That's why I love you so much. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember. I don't know what it is, but ever since COVID, yeah. I can't remember the names of anybody. <laughs> I can't read books. Don't worry so. about it. But you remember who I'm talking about, right? I know. I know exactly who you mean. She yeah. looks a lot like her, I think. Or, or a couple times yeah. when I said, is that her? And I thought, oh, no, she's much older now. I couldn't be her. Yeah, but, yeah I guess she is. I always think of her as being however old she was in the matrix <laughs> exactly right. don't don't we do that if you don't get good quality mm -hmm. work done i think it can just highlight your age instead of erase it okay but wait <laughs> everyone watch this this is a lesson now okay you get to feeling what it's like to be in my class okay uh okay. with Sorry. movie movie rob did we ever introduce you to him do you know him movie rob i don't think so he's over in israel and uh, oh. if you're ever going to do a show with him, you have to start it at 11.30 p.m. <laughs> That's the only drawback. But you know, he sometimes he'll stay up and do stuff. But he's he's a really cool guy. Maybe you could get on a show with him sometime. Um, but, yeah, he um, – I forget why I brought that up. But he uh, he's a good good friend and, and just watches tons of movies. And he tells me that, you know, 
sometimes a two out of ten, you should give it a chance. Absolutely. That's so true. Do you think so? Yeah. Give anything a chance, like, as far as movies go. Yeah. But there's so many really bad ones. Should well, you don't we... have to give them a go. You're not well, you don't know. You don't to know. watch a whole movie just because you press play. Yeah. I think that's the thing, is, like, some of us, and I am guilty of this, I feel like, oh, well, I started watching it, or I started reading it, if it's a book, or whatever. I started doing this thing, and, like, it's okay if it's not for you, and you quit. But, like, a lot mm -hmm. of... Like Plan Nine from Mars from Edward. Yeah. I mean that movie's a maybe a zero star. <laughs> but it's a so Planet bad Nine from Outer Space. Space. Yeah, and that's yeah. part of the movie Edward too. They show the making of that. Yeah, exactly. And then if you kind of some B movies are kind of have their own little fun thing going on. So I mean, well, he just... absolutely does not. He despises horror. So we don't do a whole lot together, but once in a while we do. And he asked me to come on the Lamb show. Actually, he he's like got a position now on the Lamb where he does things called Actor Studio. Oh, and so, cool. Yeah, so he was gonna do Naomi Watts, and he, I went on that, and that was amazing. She's got some amazing work. Do you like her? Uh, yeah. Oh, you're not a huge fan, okay? No, but then... I'm kind of like a huge fan. It's probably because she's from your same place. We don't like anybody who's from our same place. <laughs> I like Nicole Kidman. I think oh, yeah, that's she's... somebody from Australia that I would probably, if she's in it, I'll watch it. But that's not, not to say that all her films were good. Some yeah. of them I'm like, that was a bad film. But I enjoyed watching Nicole Kidman. So I don't know. It's funny, isn't it? It like, is. What actors you just kind of like. I'm surprised you don't like Naomi Watts because you kind of look like It's her. not personal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I that love this picture like that you have on Skype where you're kind of like you throwing your hair back. It's such a great picture, but you—I mean, so I could tell someone that's Naomi Watts, and they go, "Oh, okay, I haven't seen that picture." I'm like squinting at my screen now because it's just a small little stuff. <laughs> me, I'm like, "Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's a good picture, good choice." Yeah, it's such um, a flattering picture. I certainly don't wake up looking like that. <laughs> yeah. You're just such a wonderful, wonderful person. You need your own podcast so people can follow you. But where, where, just while I'm thinking of it, where can people follow you? Uh, probably the easiest thing is to find me on Instagram. Yeah, you're very active there. I don't know. That's where yeah. I went and to I have, find like, you. <laughs> yeah, and in my bio, you know, I have all my links there. So it's, like, easier than... Okay. And, than and what's the account there. name that uh, is your... It's just Hermione Flavia. Hermione, okay. like, is Harry Potter, which is my name. Right. And Flavia is in, that's my name. <laughs> I'll put a link on my website, too, so people can yeah. go to you. Uh, and, you know, you're going to be back again, too, so I'll, if yeah. I made any mistakes, I get nervous around beautiful people. Yeah. <laughs> I get nervous, I'm, I'm beautiful, too. Me. There we go. I'm beautiful, too. <laughs> anyway. All are. right. So let's go ahead. And, no, I don't get I'm just kidding. I don't get nervous. Either. That's why you're so great, because you are a beautiful person, but... You're very down to earth, and you like get into the nitty gritty of movies. So yeah, yeah I really like that about you. <laughs> so let's give it a rating for you, or if there's anything else you want to wrap up, and then maybe give it a rating. We'll move on to this other thing. <laughs> oh, out of ten. Yeah, um, I usually do ten. I would give it like a four or five. Oh, you have to talk about why. Well, how did it go? It Mine was a six, so you went two below mine. I think I just felt a little impatient with the long takes. Okay. And yeah, no, that's probably just it. I was probably just a little bit like, this is very weird. There's naked people. There's yeah. like smoke. Uh, like, uh, but it's not. It's not a and bad. See, I'd be like, no. this is really not weird. There's naked people. Yes. No. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. <Naked laughs> I'm sorry. Just <laughs> basically it. So I'm I think just I, I felt like. You. It's something where I would keep an eye out for this director again, or if you wrote a screenplay yeah. or something, whatever, I would definitely watch this stuff again. And I wouldn't suggest to not watch it or anything like that. It's just that when I think of like things that, um, just kind of where I watch it and I was like, I enjoyed that so much. It's not this film. <laughs> do you know what I mean? That's, that's all I, I do. Think. Like, it's and a that's taste, honest. professional taste. As opposed to, like, I have no complaints about the quality of the film. It's just... The only reason I picked yeah. it is because, you know, and over here with coronavirus and all that, it's just mm -hmm. gotten so much busier. I do all my work at home. My wife does half her work at home. She's a therapist, so she does some online and then goes to her office and does that. 
Uh -huh. But my girls have softball again. Things are kind of opening up. So, I mean, literally, when, when I found out that you wanted to know what movie... Or I was gonna. T it was time for me to decide a movie. I was just like lose because yeah. I had seen it go by on my TV so much advertising it, and I thought, well, that's a horror movie, and I haven't seen it, so we'll try it. But I, I had no idea what it would be like at all. No, but that's the thing. I'm not complaining. Like I'm glad I saw that film. And if you had, I've never heard of it. If you hadn't mentioned it, I wouldn't have watched it. And that's like one of the great things about when you have like movie friends is you can be like what is this and they'll be like just watch it or whatever and you know you're gonna love things you're gonna hate things but it's always I don't, gonna I don't know if you later. know what I mean by this but do you think people could like consider that a drug movie <laughs> I don't, a couple like, times I, I was like, I think this was made for drugs. Like 2001? Yeah, <laughs> maybe that. Like, yeah, maybe. That. But anyways, we got The House on Haunted Hill next as our second movie. This is the one that was made in 1959. Ten years before my birth. Amazing. Vincent Price is always just an impeccable presence. He, I don't, he's like one of those actors where everything he touched, he's like Michael J. Fox. Anything he did became a huge hit, you know? Yeah. It's a, and it was mostly toward the horror side of things, too. Uh, just a few things about it before we get into the discussion. Um, it says not rated. I'd say it's probably like a PG. I, I wouldn't give it an R rating. But oh, who knows? God. No, no, no. no. Yeah, uh, probably because in 59 they didn't if there's ratings. a little kid, maybe, like a couple of the, something yeah. to be like for small children, maybe not, but because it's so old, they just didn't really have like a rating system like we do now, so. No. You like older films, I remember. Love them. What? I like old films, really. Are you still reviewing classic films after two years? I am. Yeah, oh my gosh. You're amazing. I gotta go get caught up. What's the name yeah. of that website? Uh, it's wildfiremotionpictures.com, but I'm on YouTube now as well. I almost said Craven Wild. You yeah, are on YouTube. My other. Oh my gosh, I gotta do the show notes for the YouTube. Okay, so what are you calling yourself on YouTube? Uh, I think it's just Wildfire Movies or Wildfire Motion Pictures. You'd think I'd know. Wildfire Movies. Uh, but if yeah, if you go on Instagram, you can go straight to the YouTube. Oh, okay, the so YouTube it's all prepare. linked there. That's a good like home base. Like, you can just go to the YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> I was doing a thing for a little while there. You might have seen it. I mean, I know you did because you made some yeah. very sweet and kind comments. But I would just take the picture that I had in my post. I'd put the picture up, and then I'd just link it. That's all I was doing. But, uh, yeah, I kind of got tired of doing that. I, I'm trying to figure out a way where I can just, like, the things that I do do, like Twitter, if there's some way I could just send it over there, too, automatically. I know that's bad. You're not you can. To do. Yeah, I yeah. think it's easier to go from... Not with Instagram, though, because they want everything first. They want to be the ones yeah. to do it first, and I just sort of gave up. My, But my daughters love it. I mean, they are so into social media, and they tell me, Dad, no. Facebook, Twitter, no. Instagram and TikTok is what they do. Oh, my God. TikTok is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> You're on it, too? I'm on TikTok. I have two followers on TikTok, so I'm not like a TikToker, really. That's yeah. But I love it. It's just hilarious. Like if I've had yeah. a something depressing has happened or whatever, right? Yeah. TikTok is full of like cat videos and just people being a noodle and whatever. Like it's so yeah. good. So Yeah, there's clever stuff on there. They do stuff with camera angles and I mean it's fun to go through that and watch all that. It's probably a time sucker too though. Yeah, but you know, you don't have to be on there every day or whatever. That's true. Yeah. That's true. All right. So I put wildfire movies on here, but you say everything's on Instagram. So Her Hermione, and it's spelled the way you spell Hermione. I'm saying yep. your name right after two years. That should be a <laughs> I messed your name up so Never much. Oh, you know what? Them. I found our old episodes, so I'm going to re-release those. I'll let you know. Yeah, but yeah. I found them. I was going through my, uh, you know, you try and make your, file, your disc not so full of stuff. And yeah. so I was just going through it, and I was like, oh, my gosh, I didn't know I had those. Um, I, I changed, uh, you know, I changed servers a while back and sure. just put the stuff that was, you know, because it's, it's a lot of work. You know, if you, if you have like uh, a thousand posts, you know, I mean, you got to make sure that everything is the way you want it. I mean, if you're kind of a yeah. perfectionist about that, like I am. And so those I couldn't find, but now I found them, so I'm going to put them up. Nice. Okay, yeah, that'll be fun. I can't remember how we talked, but I, I sort of do. It's probably like this, huh? Yeah, pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> Except talking about those crazy women. 
And yeah. Eddie Murphy. We did Eddie Murphy one, too. We did, yeah. We? Was that my choice? Was that when I, I was... I probably was, yeah. yeah. I said 80s, I think, and you went, boom. I was like, 80s? Yeah. I can tell you about the 80s. <laughs> yes, you can. You're not I old enough to 80s. know about the 80s, though, 80s. I don't think. Oh, uh, the 80s. Yes. Just 80s action movies is like oh, a guilty yeah. pleasure for me. I lethal love Weapon. Do you like Lethal, lethal Weapon? Lethal Weapon. Yeah. Um... Anything with like Chuck Norris or like Sylvester Stallone, <laughs> like if it's like kind of trash action, whatever. But like with a good budget, obviously, I'll I'll turn up. I love it. <laughs> I yeah, I love those Chuck Norris jokes. You know where it'll oh, say amazing. like you know um, yeah. he was at Chuck Norris was attacked by a bear. The bear didn't live, but or something like that. You know? <laughs> bear didn't live, but you know, Chuck has a band aid. Like <laughs> but they go way beyond that. It's like uh, I anyway, you know, they're funny. Yeah. All right. So House on Haunted Hill. This is definitely one of those creepy movies that I like, and the older movies definitely have a lot of creepiness. It's a six point nine on uh, Internet Movie Database with twenty two thousand uh, review or people that voted and then uh i get i well i'll talk about what i gave it at the end i was good to it i gave it an eight i mean to me that was you know i loved it it was a great movie but i had some things that made it hard to sit through it a little bit but let me just talk about it first let me not do the evaluate see see what i do i yeah. share my i share my process with everyone i share my journey <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're just going to observe, and then we'll evaluate when the time is right. There you go. A millionaire offers 10000 to five people who agree to be locked in a large, spooky, I like that word, rented house overnight with him and his wife. That's about what it is. The director is William Castle. And let's just take a quick look at what Mr. William has done. And probably Howard's going to laugh at me that I said that, because it looks like he's done a lot. He was um, like a low-budget B director, so he sort of churned out a lot of films. Oh, great. Of so you... be. But that's not to say that any of them are as good as like House on Haunted Hill. But, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, were they mostly horror? Or... Uh, I can't remember. I don't know if I've seen like loads of his stuff, to be fair. I'm looking at it. Let's see, it started... Oh, my gosh. 39. 1939. Yeah. He did a, something called Coney Island. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, don't really <laughs> I don't really recognize any of these names. Uh, yeah, I don't recognize any of them. These are oldies. You probably would if you looked over. The oh, my gosh. He did 13 Ghosts. Do you, do you have any connection to that? They made a remake of it, I think, in yeah. the 90s. Um, but I went back and saw the original recently in 1960. Yeah. And uh, it was it a Roger lot like Corman. this movie. Uh, Roger Corman did so many of them. Let me tell them. you. He's so great. I will look at it right now. Let's see. It's a great title, 13 Ghosts. Yeah. Uh, we have Charles Herbert, uh, Joe Morrow, Martin Milner. Do you know those? Martin Milner. Yeah, yeah kind of. That sounds familiar, Martin Milner. Yeah. Uh, okay, yeah, so not that one you mentioned. Unless he's way down. This is like 10 people. I don't think he's below Roger 10. Coleman's a producer, so... Oh, the producer. Oh, yeah. okay. See, I'm not a script writer. I don't know it's these... It's okay. <laughs> just kidding. No, I don't. Some of them were like... Because they were just small budget, you could get away with a lot of things. Um, yeah. Yeah. So he made some really classic films with Roger Coleman, but they're... Um, Sort of on the lower budget. I would want to... to I, no, I'm not going to do this. I'm just... It's a joke that I would say this. Maybe you've seen it. The movie Baskin. Baskin? Have you heard like of Baskin? Baskin Robin? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, no. <laughs> like you said, there's so many movies. Trust me. Go see your movies first. Don't see... I mean, it's... <laughs> but there is a scene where this guy is torturing another guy, and he, he takes his eye out with a fork. Ugh. And it looks real. I mean, it looks like it's really I being done. Torture stuff. I cannot do with torture. <laughs> it's like I don't know. You know? Yeah, it's, it's like it's... just something I'm not <laughs> good at. Yeah. It's maybe not something I should be good at, but yeah. You know Give what I don't like is when people. Which isn't it? <laughs> yeah. 
I, the, my thing like that is I don't, and even I just saw a horror movie like this where it did this. The person throws up, and for some reason they keep the little pieces of the throw up on their face. <laughs> it's so gross. I hate that. It's like, come on, wipe it it's, off. Like any normal human being would wipe it up. I know. <laughs> I know. They, did they put in the script keep the throw up on the face? I yeah. mean, come on. <laughs> Small pieces of carrots, very specific. <laughs> okay, so we don't like eyeball stuff and we don't like throw up stuff. Okay, yeah. good. We got that established. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Got it but, now. So basically, Thank the way I look at it, this guy, William Castle, is, you know, totally established director. He's done a lot. If you, did fame. we talk about it's that? Fame. Did we just that? I think we saw it around the same time, so maybe we did. We might have, yeah. It's going back a ways, and both of us. Well, you're still on your same blog, so good for you. But I've I've changed (laughs) things up a few times. Um, But yeah, that was. Gosh, I loved that movie. So there are some old black and whites that are definitely worth going back for. Uh, It's not just about CGI, folks. Let me just break that to you. Um, You know, we look at old movies and the first thing I think we do a lot of times is we evaluate them and Mm -hmm. we go, okay, there's no CGI or that looks so fake. A lot of people say that. My son, he's 22. Sometimes when we watch horror movies, he'll say that. He'll go, that looks so fake. When I'm not, I just think, oh, he's such on a different level than me because I I like it when it looks fake. (laughs) such a thing about realism. Mm Mm-hmm. At the moment, like everything has to look really real and people have to be really real. And if it's not real, it's very much like nobody would do that. And like it doesn't really look like that. And that looks so fake. And I just think it's such a difference from like 80s horror films that were so cheesy. And it's like, don't go into the like, don't go down the hallway, you know, like don't go up the stairs. And it's like you'd be screaming at the TV like nobody. Yes. We all knew nobody acted like that. And we all knew that if somebody's head exploded or like some ridiculous <laughs> thing like yeah. i think it was sort of meant to be a little bit silly to just cut it off from being too terrifying you know maybe and Whereas i know that the yeah they were very careful person. about what they allow in the yes. theaters whereas now you know it's not as bad but um yeah i mean an r rating like in the 80s was a big deal yeah. whereas now like something that would have been an R in the eighties is just like a, a TV show on HBO or something, you know, like it's, yeah. Yeah. So Do it's you, very- you, you, you've made movies before as a, yeah. the Australian actress that you are. But I'm not going to tell you what they are. <laughs> well, great. Don't worry. I, I have like 46 <laughs> songs that I've recorded online and I don't share that either. Sure. <laughs> but no, actually my stuff is on YouTube and I st- I've started, uh, I was, you know, uh, I mentioned to you one time that I, 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 you know, grew up with Gwen Stefani. So, you know, I, part of my bitterness toward her <laughs> is that I, w- I did music too, like growing up and I played in bands and stuff, but it didn't happen for me. Oh. <laughs> that's okay though I still got my if you had some video here you could see I got my guitars all hanging up behind me so I play music all the time and I love it and it's always great to see Gwen she's, I feel you know really happy for her success uh, when I first started teaching it would have been back in 97 I think yeah she uh, her mom and, and my I was visiting my mom and then my mom's best friends with her mom that's how I got to know her uh, growing up and uh, so we were sitting there at this fisherman's place uh, on the pier, and I, you know everybody's like, "Oh, Gwen, you're going on tour. You know, you're going to go on tour." That's right when it was all happening for her, you know. Mm-hmm. And she looked at me and she said, "Or did she said, what are you doing, though, Damien? What are you doing?" And I said, "Oh, I started teaching on emergency credential on Santa Ana. It's kind of inner city school." And she goes, "I wish I was doing that instead of going on tour. You're amazing." Isn't that nice? Oh. Yeah, so that, she's such a good friend, very supportive. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, so that's just my little Gwen story. <laughs> hey, like, I couldn't teach. I do not okay, I would there have you go. favorites. Yeah. I would have no patience. Like, I seriously you like, doubt I that. You're very patient with me. Don't be yeah. patient. That's okay. You don't have to be patient. <laughs> <laughs> Remember in uh, the the Harrison Ford scene, uh, they thought you were so yeah, close. That thought, they said, "Dad, that's so cool that she, you know, helps people with with uh, beauty tips." You know, so yeah. you you do a lot of stuff. Never. I amazing. mean, 
important to feel good. Whatever makes you feel good. And don't judge yourself. That is That's so cool. necessary. Yeah, yeah. you got to start with the self and get yourself all squared away. Then yep. you can love others. And you can always love others, but you can actually give more when you've taken care of your own needs first. I really believe that. It's true. Yeah, and it's a hard lesson to learn. I think, like, there's a lot of cultural pressure, to, especially depending on where you're from, to, like, mm-hmm. be a giving person. And you can't give what you don't have. So, Amen, sister. You know what I mean? It's like... Yes. Yeah. And it's, I feel like, I think people mind. I think if you're like, look, I'm really sorry, but I need a day alone today. I've never had anybody be offended by that Mm-mm. ever. And yet it feels like sometimes saying something like that can be like the hardest thing, you yeah. know, to be like, I can't, I can't give you anything today, but it doesn't mean I don't care, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, and even in a relationship, I think I heard this in a wedding one time, like people are like ships and they they'll you know start out together make that commitment but sometimes it's going to be inevitable there'll be some storms the the ships need to go apart but then they come back together and they go apart again they, but they keep going down the same direction you know and, and so ships what yeah. ships don't do ships yeah. take care of themselves <laughs> yes don't expect the other ship to carry all the provisions right oh, it's like yes. you row your own boat and it's okay amen to that you need to be an individual and that's what the separating is about too when you go out in those places i'm not talking about leaving the house or anything i'm just saying separation projects things like that yeah so then when you go do them it's like then you bring something back see and so it makes both of you better that's what that's when you can look on the bright side i think of a fight or or of just saying hey you know what let's just table this so my wife and i sometimes do and then you come (laughs) then you forget about it or you come back and you have all this bounty to share that you learned so when you're with someone that's great and you're Mm -hmm. great and they're great Mm -hmm. it's so exciting when i think one of the biggest compliments from a friend or a relationship is like oh this just happened and i couldn't wait to tell you about it it's like you don't have to be joined at the hip or, you know, anything like that. Like, that's the separateness, you know. If somebody, if you have, like, the connection is strong, that person can be anywhere and they can be like, I had to tell you about this. You know, like, sharing that's it so with true. you helps complete it in a way. And I think that's a really big compliment that sometimes, you know, it's easy to overlook someone just listening and someone yeah. just sharing. I think those two things are, like, big gifts mm-hmm. that, you know... And And when you listen, (laughs) observe. Yeah, just be. Just observe, yeah. (laughs) And accept, that's another word. Accept. No, don't judge, yeah, and don't evaluate. He he says the word evaluate. Maybe because I'm a teacher, I like that word better. Yeah. I just don't like judge because it's so overused. Judge not lest you be judged, you know, just kind of overused. But I like the idea of evaluate because that causes headaches when you evaluate. There's no need for it. Just observe. People can evaluate themselves. You can just listen and, like, hear. Boy, that's the truth. Be like, I heard you. Because. Trust me, that like most people, when they tell you something about themselves that's private, they're like, oh, my God, like, mm-hmm. I'm so ashamed that this happened to me, or is it my fault, or whatever. And often just listening and being like, just mm-hmm. hearing and yeah. not saying some dumb thing. The amount of people that have been through something where someone said some dumb thing to them, mm-hmm. you know, like, that's right. Crazy. That's right. And And guys out there, girls, listeners, this is the the chemistry on this show right now is awesome. <laughs> yeah, I love it. And the only way it could have happened is if, and I'm I pretty sure this is how it happened. I might be wrong. I read a review. I looked at the byline. I thought, I wonder if she's available to do Talking Stars. And I think you came on Talking Stars when we used to do that show, yeah. Darren and I. Uh-huh. And then, so that's how it happened. So if you read somebody's article or review, hit them up for a show. Or whatever. Worked for me. <laughs> you know, like I think it's we live in a time where our people are there. You know, mm-hmm. like they're checking their comments and stuff. You know. Yeah. So yeah, I think don't be afraid to approach people, even big people. I say this to somebody mm-hmm. like who like um, used to interview people, like movie people and stuff, like a little mm-hmm. bit, and they love answering questions. You know, if you yeah. are like, you know, I want to know why Tom Cruise runs in all of his films. Why does he yeah. run all the time? Why don't you just write to him and ask him? Because honestly, like a lot of those people will write back, you know? Do you but, remember that movie Notting Hill? <laughs> yes. 
Yes. You remember when it's a horse and hound? He's from Horse and Hound. Yes. And he, that is such a funny scene. I love it. And that he's like leaving, and the guy goes, "Wait a minute! Don't you want to talk to me?" He's remember, like, he's like, he's like, uh, sure. <laughs> Anyway, it's a great you said movie. that. It is good. It's a good one. Okay, tell us about House on Haunted Hill. I'm sorry to get into everything, but that's we're running out of time. So you go ahead. Oh, sorry. And we, no, we, no, we, there's wait. no sorry. It's my fault. Um, so House on Haunted Hill. Um, you know this film is great because it's just great. Yeah. It's weird. Like I would say it's kind of it's a horror movie because it's set in a haunted house kind of a situation. Mm-hmm. But and the remake is definitely sort of haunted house stuff. But mm-hmm. really, it's maybe more of like a mystery or a thriller when you get down to it. Like it's very much like um, the movie Clue. Do you remember that movie Clue? Oh yeah, you know that, that was like, a great movies one. like that where it's like they're in a house mm-hmm. and they can't leave, and then there's a murder. You know, it's kind of like that. But um, I don't know. There's a guy in this. You film know who did that a lot was yeah. Agatha Christie. Agatha yeah. Christie movies, yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, Clue's based on Agatha Christie for sure. Yeah. Yeah, and it's that kind of thing. It's like like a locked room situation, mm-hmm. and then just kind of players from different places and whatever. Um, yeah. But there's a guy called Pritchard in this movie who I love. Mm-hmm. He's meant to be an alcoholic. I do too. So his hair's just messy all the time, because in the 50s, if you were an alcoholic, you just had messy hair, and everyone knew yeah. what that meant. <laughs> Yeah. And he looks like he needs a good nap and like maybe his blood sugar is low. Like he just kind of looks forlorn and a little <laughs> sad and his uh, family owned the house. So that's why what his connection, how he was invited. And he loves telling these stories like we shouldn't be here. And it's like, well, why are you here if you shouldn't be here? And then he's like, yeah. hey, there's some crazy story like his brother killed or a woman killed her husband and her husband's brother or something like that. And you're like, wow. And he's like, seven people have died here and the ghosts mm. run the house. And it's kind of reminds me a little bit of Shirley Jackson um, Hill House in that sense, because mm. it's sort of like the disparate characters and the caretakers that won't stay overnight and stuff. Yes. And he's just like so intense for the whole film. <laughs> he's just on yeah, a he trip. Is. The whole time, like anytime anyone talks to him, he goes, you know, somebody was decapitated over there and he's like, <laughs> they never found the heads and like all this stuff. Like it just, you just, you're like, this is why you have no friends, Pritchard. Okay. Because, like, <laughs> you know, we're just like, do you, what do you want for dinner? And he's like, you realize somebody was murdered. And like, okay, okay. You know he's Debbie I mean? Downer. <laughs> yeah. He's obsessed. And um, so I think he's a great character because nobody really acts like that, I guess. And it's it's kind of funny. But I'm sure at the he time is funny. in the 50s, it probably wasn't meant to be as funny as it is. Um, and I love Vincent Price is the host. He's the one with the money. And then he, he walks in and he's like he's talking to his wife. And they're just flirting so much. Like they're, it's hilarious because there's a moment where he goes, so, darling, do you remember that time you tried to poison me in Italy? And she's like, ah, that was a great trip. And it's, like, so genuine. <laughs> like, they just, they love each other, but they hate each other, and, and they're going to kill each other. So yeah. It's, it's kind of weird. <laughs> What's up with his wife? <laughs> she's amazing. Yeah. You know, she was meant to be the next Marilyn Monroe. That that was, like, the big thing with her. Is, I um, They were like, wow, she photographs so well, which she totally does. Um, but she just didn't really... I think she just got put in the wrong films because she's really good in this. Um, but she got a lot of B movies and just didn't kind of get bumped up to the, the starlet status where you would get like really promoted by the studio. She's known for house on haunted Hill, the scarlet hour lights out 1950. I didn't even know there was a movie called lights out. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, 19. Have you seen it? No, I've seen that new one. (laughs) And then Mannix. She was in a season, uh, a, like a show it was called Mannix. Yeah. And she was Gerda Aspinall in that. So she's oh my gosh, she's been in a lot of movies. Yeah, when, she just doesn't didn't get into that stratosphere, you know. Well first one was nineteen fifty. She ended up married to a firefighter. I find that adorable. Yeah. Yeah. She was married like two or three times, but the first ones were just sort of 
um, didn't seem to stick for whatever reason. And then she was like, I'm going to marry outside of Hollywood and see how that works. I'll just marry this handsome fireman over here. And that worked out perfectly. And they were together for like years. I'm like, I like that. That's a nice ending to that story. You know? You don't usually see that because people in Hollywood, they tend to marry their own. They need, tend to marry other actors, you know, because it's everyone easier does. that way. I think everyone does. I think if you work in the medical profession, you mm. often are, because that's who you meet. That's who you mix with. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But I think that's it's true. good. Like, um, Julia Roberts is married to someone who's um, not a Regu- he's regular a sound dude. Guy. Yeah. He's a fairly regular guy. And it's like, I remember, like, interviews with her where they're like, who is this random guy? Like, it's not Richard Gere or someone like we know. She's like, yeah, those guys are all dicks. <laughs> I was like, yeah. Yeah, okay. and it doesn't seem to work out well yeah, for for uh, musicians, like, say, musicians, when they get with other musicians. It, sometimes it's like a complete train wreck, you know? Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. And I think of uh, Sean Astin. I th- it's not Sean Astin. Who's, who From am I Lord thinking of? of? Not him. Uh, it's He reminds me of him, but he doesn't look anything like him. Uh, Scent of a Woman, Chris O'Donnell. Chris, Chris O'Donnell. They sort of look alike, don't they? Uh, oh, I've anyway. never noticed before. That's so funny. Well, no, the reason I brought it up is it's because so Chris funny. O'Donnell married a kindergarten teacher. No way. Yeah, and, and I really respect that. Um, and it's got to be hard, though, because, you know, they're just Plainsville, you know, life, and here your, your spouse is getting autographs everywhere you go, you know. Yeah. That part of it would be hard, but I think it's wise to maybe marry somebody who's a little different, you know, does something different, Yeah. especially if you're in Hollywood. Well, you know, it's not the same thing, but um, my partner works in IT, and I definitely ah, yeah. don't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Do it's well, really he, funny. He could hook you up with your own podcast if you wanted it. You already do so much, though. Yeah. So Vincent Price is kind of apparently very jealous of his wife. She wants to get rid of him. He wants to get rid of her. And the whole party is a plot between the two of them to sort of bump off the other one. And it's a bit of a question as to, like, who's going to, who, you know, what's what's happening and whatever. Um, but it just has these amazing, and by amazing I don't mean good quality or good moments that are just the whole reason I watch this film every year at Halloween. There's definitely, like, bits of this film that are a little bit slow. Like, there are a couple of talky bits where I'm kind of, like, always kind of just phase out a little bit. But there's a a caretaker who's wheeled in on basically, like, on a skateboard. And she just is frozen in this pose. And her eyes are white. And she just frightens people. And then goes out of the room like she's on a rope like it's amazing yeah that's a weird scene it's so great i'm like what like it just cracks me up every time and then there's a scene with a falling chandelier and this guy's like oh i must get this damsel out of the way of this chandelier but you can some of the shot is from above Mm -hmm. so you see that the chandelier is a good two meters away from her i mean she could have stayed right where she was (laughs) oh that's so funny i love it i love old movies for that it's so fun and then Vincent Price is just diabolical the whole time. Oh, He's yeah. just like, I'm going over here now. And you're kind of like, all right, spooky man. Like, <laughs> he's just having fun being himself. And, um, yeah, and then at the end, it kind of feels like everything's been explained mm-hmm. by the, you know, the, the couple plotting against each other. Like, she's going to do this and blah, blah, blah. And it's all a big plot. And then at the end, Pritchard's just like, oh, the ghosts have struck again. And I'm like, dude, they were like, that wasn't a ghost and that wasn't it. Like, which is the bit that you are sure is a ghost? This kind of thing is that just the house makes people want to kill each other, I guess. Like, he's oh. determined that that's what's happening. And you cannot convince him otherwise. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's And they have um, just a spooky feel to it. I mean, clearly it's that's a haunted house. Here. It's so great. But- yeah, it's very spooky and a lot of... Well, it's black and white, I think. I think they colorized There's it, There's a too. color version. Personally, I okay. think the black and white... Yeah. You get Why the not go black and white? Yeah. More. I, I say if you don't mind black and white, watch it in black and white because it's, it's more spooky. Exactly. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Sure. That's what I'm looking for in this life. Spooky. <laughs> <laughs> and creepy. <laughs> um, all right. Well, gosh, this is was a really good choice. I enjoyed it. 
I just kind of like, kind of like I said with the other one, I sort of let it just kind of wash over me. Um, I felt like I was in a Twilight Zone episode sometimes. Yeah, it is like and, a Twilight Zone episode a little yeah, bit. Yeah, or a Hitchcock. It was kind of like, you know, had that psycho feel to it at times. But really, it's a it's a haunted house movie, so if you're into those, uh, That's my you should favorite. definitely check it out. If it's, you like the haunted house genre. Yeah, love it. Mm. I don't That's care. Amazing. I mean, the same thing in haunted houses, it's uh, movies and books. It's pretty much the same thing every time. So it's like, I don't know why I like it so much. (laughs) You know, oh, there's family secret. And you're like, okay. Like, I'm there. It's fine. You had me at the house, you know? Oh, no, I don't have that. But look, I can sit it on here, I'm pretty sure. So I just go chat, I think. Yeah. And then I'll go like this. You should watch this when you get a chance. We're going to wrap it up, but... Okay, do you see it? Yeah, it came through, yeah. Okay, perfect. Yeah, at. it's called The Girl on the Third Floor, and the okay. way that they make this girl's face, it's really <laughs> weird and creepy. It and it's great. interesting. I, I would be interested in actually talking about that movie with you, because there's just a lot there. And I, I would be more specific than I was tonight. <laughs> sure. They were just kind of like well, gener- gen- picked, generality type movies. You know? I think, like, I thought it was funny. Both of us picked films that were about an hour long. Yeah. Cause like, oh, they're I, short. How funny. Yeah. House on Haunted Hill is from that era where a lot of films are only 70 minutes. Yeah. And um, I just thought that was interesting. I don't know why it was interesting, but I was like, that's, we both picked kind of. Yeah. Yeah. One well, I was going to almost pick. Go ahead. Called, um, have you seen The Witch in the Window? I have not. It's, called. it's like a small budget film again, but it's just kind of original. Okay. Um, well, so you I've might been like looking it. at it for a long time on my list and I just haven't dived in so now I will <laughs> yeah I was kind of like it's not like um, it's more like hair on the back of your neck goes up mm-hmm, type of creepy mm-hmm, mm-hmm, as opposed mm-hmm. to like it's not really jump scares or anything like that but it's kind of we have one location and three actors or something like that and it just kind of does some good stuff with the material I think um, and it's got because of the performances being really good um, okay, I'm going to watch it. It works. Like, it was one of those films where you're like, if this had been different in any way, it wouldn't work. You know what I mean? Like, it could have been a really boring film. I'm just um, writing it there in the chat because what I'll do is I'll come back here when we yes. get ready to schedule our next show, and I'll have this. I'll go right to the chat, and then it'll show so me. So you have, like, a note. That's a good idea. And you should definitely watch that. I don't, I'm going I'm to. I'm going to have to. Sure. Let me be honest with you, though. I don't know if you'll like it. Okay, so be, I'm just being real with you. Um, it's got some heavy-duty themes, but you're okay. an adult, so you'll be fine. I'm a grown-up. Okay. I'm a grown-up. Yeah, I'd love to hear your point of view on it. It's quite a quite a film. I didn't love love it, but it definitely got me thinking. I like ones like that. Like sometimes they're not like um, something you're gonna watch every year or whatever, but you yeah. can be like, yeah, it kind of made me think. That could be a good thing. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well. I'll probably just cut a little of that out where we talked about our next show and stuff. Yes. But everything else, I'm just liking this conversation. This was yeah. awesome. I what I had, what I had last on here. Sorry to interrupt you. I'm sorry. Right I'm such an interrupter. No, and Skype is terrible. <laughs> Skype is terrible because there's a little delay, so you yeah. don't know if you're interrupting. I know, and it's like half a second. So you yeah. have that natural pause at the end of a sentence, and I'm like, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> it'll be fine. Now. <laughs> I just want you to give some guest plugs at here at the end. About me? Yeah, of course. You're the guest. Oh yeah, I am the guest. <laughs> I was Do we so feel so at home together? She's here. co-host. <laughs> She's my co-host. <laughs> that would be fun. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm not because of um, you know things going on in the world right now. I'm not doing anything like super outgoing yeah. or anything like that. Yeah. But. Um, I have my little YouTube channel. I always talk about classic films, and um, that's yeah. I talk about new stuff as well. Um, All but, right. And how would we? Oh, you say everything is like indexed and linked on your Instagram. Yeah, and I think I was just thinking like that's probably the easiest way to find me because you can just okay. find me. And then I have my little link tree on Instagram, so you can go into nice. the link in my bio and whatever you're interested in, you can just go to that, and you don't have to like you know https <laughs> yeah and tell her that you heard about her from damien's show riley on film yeah, then do that. she'll be like oh my gosh he's actually a legitimate show 
<laughs> I'm just kidding. Anyways, so, okay, well, great. That sounds like your plug is kind of just Instagram right now. Um, yeah, I just think it's probably the easiest way to find me. Yeah, that's yeah. great. Well, I mean, that's how I got a hold of you. I started thinking, yeah. I wonder what she's doing. I looked and I saw, like, wildfiremovies at gmail.com. Your name brought up all these emails. I said, I don't even know which one to email. So I know she'll be over there on Instagram. Yeah. Sure enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's awesome. Um, okay, will you return? Yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, right. I will. Now I'm happy. You now I'm happy. Turn, like the bad yes. guy returns. <laughs> the sequel. It's it's too fun. much fun. Please follow this lady. She's wonderful. <laughs> um, all right, guys. So that pretty much wraps it up. I want to thank you for listening. Any, any, uh, I, I don't want to put you on pressure, but you could just say, Bye, my dears, or something like that. Or you could give a you know a quote, or just what do you oh. say? And you can wait too, because I'll clip out the empty space. Well, if I could do a Vincent Price impression, oh please, wouldn't that be amazing? If I could just be oh like, my god, bye, yes, <laughs> or something like that. You know, whatever. <laughs> you gotta do it. <laughs> I can't do that. <laughs> oh okay, all right. Oh. Well, I don't know. I I appreciate everybody that listens. Me too. Yeah, it's nice, isn't it? It's such yeah. a good time to be alive. I know there's a lot going on, a lot of bad things and stuff, but mm-hmm. there's a lot of connection and stuff as well. So it's nice to absolutely. Um, it's nice to be on a podcast and talk about things that um, that you love. You know, like I love movies. You love movies. It's but not- you know, all those things you just mentioned in the world that are kind of bad and ugly. Yeah. Observe them. Yeah, you don't have observe to Observe them. Yeah, just observe them. Yeah. See, that's this Deepak guy. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for being on. Thanks for having me. You bet. Thank you for listening to Riley on Film. I'm your host, Damian Riley. You can find out more and subscribe always for free at RileyOnFilm.com. Now... Have a great day.